get in tune with the earth and the snow. It's a spiritual practice. So I want to encourage you all to think about your life, your day-to-day -day life, and ways to engage spiritual practice. Now, I want to share a little bit about uh, a turning point for me in my, a spiritual defining moment for me in my life um, that happened just under five months ago. And I bring this up because one of the things that, that also can happen as we are discovering and, and tapping into our spirituality, understanding what spirituality is, is that you might run into some conflict. You might have moments where you thought you understood something and then you don't. Or you thought it was this way, but it's not. Or you're, you want to make a decision, but, but then you're con there's a con conflict on the inside, right? Or maybe you've been taught something, or you believe something, and then life happens, and now your belief is messed with a little bit. As I share with you, I've been blessed to travel and do a lot of things. And so in, in, in all of my experiences, because I, I can't take my whole spiritual journey because we don't have that much time. That would take another semester's class. But... <laughs> But, but I can share with you a moment where my spirit and spirituality were remixed. Somebody say remixed. <laughs> where, where what I thought I knew for sure, doop, 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 they, they, uh, life remixed it on me. Five months ago, just under five months ago. So, so one of the things I didn't share with you earlier about who I am, in addition to being a pastor and a community leader and you know, radio host and all these things, I'm also a mother and a grandmother. Somebody say, who are you? <laughs> I'm a good looking grandmother. Give me my prize. <laughs> so, so I, so, but, but just under five months ago, one of my children was killed, murdered. And um, that was a spiritually defining, redefining moment. Because I knew we had to watch one of my children die in the hospital. And I hope that doesn't invoke any triggers or tears for anybody because. As I understand God, God has been good to our family. But I will say that there were several moments in that three days that we were in the trauma center that were really spiritually redefining. And I share this with you because there was also a moment of great spiritual conflict. But having a sense of my spirituality and having a spiritual practice and, and having a sense of spirit flowing in my life also helped to ground me at a time where I probably would have lost my mind. So the first incident, um, when, I, when, we, when we arrived at the hospital and I see my child bandaged and plugged up, um, a part of me as a mother wanted to just faint. And those of you who have parents, uh, and you know, you especially have parents who just like don't want you to cut your fingernail, I'm one of those parents, right? So. Seeing my child in that bed bandaged up and it's not looking good. But the nurse out of nowhere says, and she just out of nowhere says, she quotes a scripture to me, and the scripture that she quotes to me uh, was out of the book of Proverbs, and it goes something like, um, uh, trust the Lord with all your heart, and be not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And so for me as a Christian, that nurse quoting that scripture right in that moment, that connected me back to my spirituality of trusting the Lord, trusting that infinite wisdom that's greater than myself in this moment and greater than the situation that's happening. The second pivotal point um, was after two days, it became very clear that my child wasn't going to wake up. And we had to make some decisions as a family. And one of the decisions was to take my child off life support. But there's a moment, and I pray that you never have to experience this, but, but, but part of the process is that they have, to, they have to unplug everything for 15 minutes exactly. It was the longest 15 minutes of my life. This is where the spiritual conflict comes in. I'm a pastor, right? I tell y'all that. And one of the messages that I preach to my church is about miracles. But I wasn't getting my miracle. So in those 15 minutes, me and God had to talk because I was spiritually convicted. Why wasn't it happening the way I expected? Why didn't things go the way that I had read in the Bible they could go? I, you answered everybody else's prayer, why didn't you answer my prayer? Spiritual conflict. The, the other side, though, there was another part of me that was saying, remember, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. So, and so I bring that up because there will be times
times in life where our spirituality is, is in conflict. Where we're thinking one thing and things come differently. Or we see something happening or an event happening and we're like, why is this happening? Maybe there isn't a God. Or maybe there is. Maybe there isn't an infinite source, or maybe there is. And so, and so I want to share, I share that with you to let you know, if you ever find yourself in spiritual conflict, you're in an okay place. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. Don't get worried. Just, just, just rise through it and keep asking yourselves the deeper questions. So those 15 minutes was the longest 15 minutes of my life. And in those 15 minutes, I had to, I, 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 did, I did my prayers. <laughs> I, I, I talked to God, and I did the things that I needed to do to get through that moment. The second, the third pivotal point in this journey um, was I had to preach my child's eulogy. Now, I didn't have to do it, but I chose to do it because I'm a mama bear type of mama. There wasn't nobody preaching my child's eulogy but his mama, right? And so that's me in the middle with my pastor, Dr. Murray, and that's me about to preach my child's eulogy. And I have my head down, and I'm praying, and I'm really needing grounding so I don't pass out in the pulpit, so I can say what's on my heart and what's on my mind to say, right? And so, again, my spirituality and my understanding, even in that moment, I'm saying to myself, and again, I'm Christian, so this is how I talk. God, I know you're going to get me through this moment, right? And it goes well. It actually went very well. And several people came up to me afterwards in complete tears because, number one, they couldn't believe that I preached my child's eulogy, but the message that was given to me, it actually was not a message about him. It was a message about trust because that was, the, that was what grounded me in my spirituality in that, in that season. Now, and it still is what grounded me. It's what allows me to be standing here in front of you all today sharing, right? The, first, the fourth pivotal moment, and then we're gonna wrap it up and I'll invite you to ask some questions. The fourth pivotal moment was on my birthday. One of my uh, sadder moments in this process was coming my birthday, realizing my child was not gonna be there to share my birthday with me. And I was really like having a rough morning. But a couple months prior, we were informed that there was a young lady who had a four-year-old, and the four-year-old might be my son's child. And so we do all the things that's necessary. His dad took the DNA test and all and all that. And on my birthday, when I thought that life was just sad and oh my gosh and oh my God and my child here give me a gift, whoop, I get an email from the lab company. So and so, so and so, so and so, ninety-nine point nine percent your credit. And I thought, even from heaven, you're still giving me gifts. And so that 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 reshaped my whole spiritual. I've been remixed from that, that experience.